In order to solve challenge 10, I'm gonna first remove my NS log statement so I don't get a huge NS log that prints out. We've already proved that our dictionary works properly. Next, we wanna add a UI table view to our storyboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and type table view into my objects library. And I'm not gonna add a table view controller, I'm gonna add a table view to my project. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hook this up to my header file so I can hold down the Alt key and press on ccviewcontroller.h and we're gonna control drag to our header file here. But we can simply call this table view. And notice that I'm using camel case. Now let's go back to single view for just a minute and we're gonna update our table view a little bit. So let's add a table view cell to our table view. And let's go ahead and update the reuse identifier to user cell. We're also going to go ahead and change the style to subtitle so that we get both a title and a subtitle section. Finally, let's go ahead and we're going to update or implement our table view onto our ccviewcontroller.h and .m files. So let's navigate to ccviewcontroller.h and the UI view controller is going to conform to both a data source and a delegate for UI table view because table views are special. They get both a data source, which tells us what type of information to add to our table view, as well as a delegate, which tells our table view how it should function when the user taps on it and does things to our table view. We're only going to be really using the data source methods for now, but in the future, it's useful to add both at the same time because it's really common that once you add a table view, you at that point or in the future will add additional functionality uh, in order to interact with your table view. So let's go ahead and add the protocols UI table view data source and we can also add UI table view delegate and notice that we add a comma in between our protocols. So now we get access to all the methods defined inside of UI table view data source and UI table view delegate. So I'm going to go to ccviewcontrol.m and let's implement both methods. So we're going to be able to write NS integer, and we're going to write table view, and we're going to select number of rows in section. Well, how many rows in our section do we think we should have? Well, our users array has four elements, and that's how many rows we're going to want in our table view. So we should return the count of our users array. So we can return self.users, and we'll use the count method in order to get the number of elements in our current users array. The next thing we want to do is we want to return a UI table view cell. And, and these are going to be the table view cells that are displayed in each row of our table view. So we're going to write UI table view cell, because that's what we're going to return. And we're going to write table view cell for row at index path. And again, notice I'm using the autocomplete. It's super easy when you use the autocomplete and you know that you're getting these names in there correctly. Um, so what are we gonna do here? We're gonna write static and a string cell identifier. And what do we do? We call this a user cell. Next, we wanna create a UI table view cell object. And we're going to write this as table view. And we're going to DQ a reusable cell uh, with identifier for index path. So we're going to use our cell we just created, our cell identifier. And for the index path, we're just going to use index path, or the parameter that gets added as part of this method. So what's happening here? Well, we're creating a UI table view cell with a variable named cell. And we're trying to only reuse cells, so we're not creating different instances of cells, uh, and we're using the proper identifier that we set up here that links to our storyboard or the cell we added to our table view, and we added an identifier on that prototype cell called user cell. Finally, it's asking where should we do that for? Well, let's do it for the index path uh, or the current row where we're figuring out whether or not we should create a new cell or use um, the template we already have. So the next thing we want to do is we want to return our cell and this will make our error go away but our cell needs some sort of information. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to have to learn how to index into our array. And we're going to use our literal syntax to access the values for our keys. So let's first write NS dictionary because we know that our array has a series of dictionaries. So we can write this is equal to our user. And we'll simply say self.users. Ah, actually, let's use our literal syntax for this as well. So we're going to do self.users, which is our array. And we're going to index into our array using index path.row. In the past, we've used the method object for index and used index path.row. Now we're using literal syntax in order to access elements in our array. And we know that our array is a series of NS dictionaries. So now we have this user dictionary and it'll iterate over all four of the user dictionaries we have. So let's write cell.textlabel.text. We're gonna update our text label and let's update this with the user's uh, name. So to access the user's name, let's use our user dictionary and we're going to, again, use our literal syntax here. So we're going to be able to access the key uh, or the value for the key. And we're going to be able to use user name. And we're going to use user name here because we set this up in our define. And we get access to this define because we imported the ccuser.data.h file. So now let's update our detailed text label. And we're going to set that equal to user and we'll say user email. And let's update our image view. So cell.imageView.image is equal to user profile or user profile picture. And the final thing we need to do is we need to set up both the data source and delegate properties of our table view. And we set those both equal to cell. So just like our scroll view, where we had a different class that was managing this functionality and just telling us when these things were occurring, we also have two helper classes or protocols that are gonna get called and be able to populate the information for our table view when we set these properties. So we're gonna simply say self.tableview.datasource is equal to self and self.tableview.delegate is equal to self. And what's happening here is we're saying, tell me, tell this current view controller, uh, or set this property equal to myself so that my table view can access me and send me information. So great, once we have both of these set up, we're gonna be able to run our application and we'll see that our image view is populate and that we now have our username and our email that print out as well.